All right, Acts 3, a lame man healed. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Let's just stop there real quickly. I'll just make a couple of comments. Um, so he was from the womb and they laid, they had to carry him daily and they laid him and that, that, um, that gate called beautiful. That's, the, that's the, the, the Solomon's gate. And that would be the front uh, in the front of the temple where the columns are, there's like a, a covering and people would meet and talk there. So they laid him down there every day. And verse three, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for an alms. We know what alms are. It's like a giving. It could be, it could actually be a deed. It could, it could be money. It could be, it could be a lot of things. It could be food. It could be, a, you know, anything given in charity and love uh, in the name of God. So uh, verse four, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them. So gave heed means listened and looked, uh, expecting to receive something of them. Verse six, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he was leaping, he was leaping, and he was, and he leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Let's stop there just for a minute. A couple of comments. You know, they're always talking about silver and gold. That was money back then. So it's not like they had paper. There was no, there was no paper back then. It was silver and gold was their money. Um, and it says, notice something now. It says, and he leaping up stood. And walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. I don't know if any of you here, if any of you have seen anybody in a, uh, who has been lame for a good part of their life. The legs go into what's called atrophy. You get muscle atrophy. Atrophy means the shrinking of. So they, they just, they, they fade away. They, 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 they literally dissolve. And if you see somebody that's been either in a wheelchair most of their life or whatever, their legs are going to be super skinny and like just bones, no muscle whatsoever. Now you think about that. So now, uh, now all of a sudden he can walk. It's not just a question that he can walk. The muscle had to be restored for him to be able to jump up and down. You can't do that on atrophied legs. You can't. And I, I invite you all to go just Google leg atrophy and look at the, what the pictures of the, the legs look like. So can you imagine the, 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 the scope of this miracle, what the people who were there seeing it, what they saw, and, and you know, that, that the, the muscles filling in and, and, and the legs being restored to, to a creation order. And for him to be able to not only just stand up, he wasn't wobbling, he was leaping up and down. So that's quite an incredible thing. We, we you know, we tend to, uh, we tend to we say, okay, yeah, he never walked and now he's walking. But you know, to realize the scope that, you know, of the, of the miracle itself, you know, I, I, I heard, and this is a, uh, you know, I heard it, I, I read it, this is a, a written testimonial, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I, I tend to believe that it is true, because, because I know God, and uh, during the Azuzu uh, Street revival, there was pray, they were praying over a man, and literally, he had, a, he was missing an arm, and the arm grew out in front of, in front of the people, so, you know, these things, when you, can you imagine seeing a guy there who had virtually like bones for legs, all of a sudden jumping up and down with muscles in his legs and all that, how he got restored. So it's quite something when you think about it. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, wouldn't you? <laughs> praise God. I praise God for every single little, the smallest of miracles, because each miracle is not small. It is a miracle, and a miracle is something that you know you just you can't get around. I mean, that's that's God, that's God. You know, we cannot put God in a box. And you know, 
Every single miracle is to the glory of God. Every single one, as I said earlier. And the people saw him walking and praising God, verse 10, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which happened unto him. So they were filled with wonder and amazement, you know, and they knew, obviously, they knew who he was. They'd seen him every day for who knows how long, laying there, you know, uh, begging for something so that, so that he could eat or whatever, just begging. Uh, verse 11, Peter admonishes the outlookers, onlookers. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, imagine he was like hugging, must have been hugging them, you know, uh, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's. So Solomon's beautiful. Greatly wondering, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go, Pilate was determined to let him. When he was determined to let him go, but ye denied the Holy One and the Just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And His name, through faith, in His name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and and know. Yea, the faith which is by him that him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. To the glory of God. Now I'm just going to go into, um, into the Thomas Nelson here, the, the, the commentary uh, for verse 2 to 16. And I'll stop at 16 and I'll, and I'll read that commentary. This passage demonstrates some important truths regarding Bible miracles. One, they always involve demonstrable physical needs so that they are signs. And that's that re references uh, Acts 2.43, which says, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. You know, fear came upon every soul. When you have something happen to you, and I've seen this with my own eyes, with my neighbor, when you realize that, there, that God just did something for you and you realize that he's there and he's listening, you get the fear of the Lord. And not only is it that fear at first is like, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble, <laughs> you know, because, because you realize you can't hide anything. You can't hide anything. But, but, but the more you get to know God, the more that fear becomes reverence and, 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 and marveling at and being awestruck by, by all God's love and all his mercy and, and, and salvation. And knowing that, that you know, how, how amazing God is, you know, the more you get to know him, the more you read the scriptures, the company of the scriptures, Romans 6, 16. 16.6, uh, one, one of the two. So the more you get to know God and the more you read his word, the more comfort you gain. And I'll say this, you know, what, from what I've seen, God cares about all the world, all his creation, from the tiniest creature to the largest and, and all the rest of the world. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Now, my neighbor, I prayed over his back. He was complaining about his back. And I said, let's see what God is going to do for you. And I raised the hand up to the heavens. And I point, I didn't even touch him. I pointed my hand. And his, right, I was about maybe eight or 10 inches from his back. And I started praying. And I felt the dunamis. I felt 
that it's, you can't describe it. It's you, you, you can't describe what the feeling when the when the, that when that power is going is 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 going through your hand. Pastor knows what I'm talking about. That power that that it's just an it's almost like electricity, but it's not. It's it's just an indescribable feeling. But you know that it's there. Like Jesus felt the the virtue, the dunamis, the power leave him when the woman touched his his. Uh, his his robe just his just touching his robe he felt that leave me that it's it's something that you can't experience and and when he when when my neighbor he must have felt the same thing and then realized the pain was gone in his back i said how is it he goes oh, uh, it's a lot better i said well let me do it again he goes no 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 it's okay he was afraid the fear of the lord came into him and this man now he he, he praises god all the time you know, and I'm going to miss him when I move from here because, because you know, he's, he's one of my best neighbors, but I'll get to spend an eternity with him. So, you know, because I know that he believes in his heart and he professes with his mouth. Jesus Christ is Lord. So I'm going to keep on moving here. And we're going to verse 17. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance he did it, as did also your rulers. What means that? Uh, he realizes, he perceives, he thinks, he knows, he knows that, that they did it through ignorance, right? But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted. What's he saying? Repent, turn, turn from your sin, turn to God, seek God, Jesus' commandments, seek God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And it's, remember something, that's in the Old Testament too. So it's not a new commandment. Seek God with all your heart, soul, and heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's, that's, that's in the Old Testament too. That's in Exodus. And love thy neighbor like thyself. And that is also in the Old Testament. But what's, what was the new commandment that Jesus, what, what part of it was new was, as I have loved you. In other words, lay down your life if you have to. Lay down your life for your brother. But those things, and again, verse 18, those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. What's that times of refreshing? What is that? Transliteration? We all should, we shall all be changed in an instant, remember something. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. These flesh bodies, they're going to be changed. For those, for those that are not resurrected, for those that are going to be alive at the time of the Lord's coming, they will be changed in the, in the blink of an eye. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. There will be restitution of all things. Think about that. Which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember. 22, for, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people there you go there's only one way to the father and that's through the son verse 24 yea and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. All the kindreds of the earth will be blessed. That includes the Jews. That includes the Gentiles, that includes every single, all kindreds, 
all nations, all tongues, all kindreds in thy seed. Well, we know who that, that seed is. If not all the seeds through Abraham, through the Davidic line, Jesus came and that's the seed that all that shall all the, all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And find the final verse unto you. First God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities, his meaning the people he's talking to. And that's it. Amen. Praise the Lord for Acts 3. I want to just read now the commentary from, um, again, Thomas Nelson from, that pertains from 12 to 26. Peter's second sermon also focuses on the person of Jesus Christ, showing one, that he is the healer of this man. Verses 12 to 16. And his suffering, too. His suffering demonstrates him, Jesus, to be the Messiah in verse 17 and 18. And three, that the delay in his kingdom is due to their unbelief. Verses 19 to 26. Peter literally commands in verse 19, repent so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The word translated when is used over 50 times in the New Testament. And, it, and only here is translated when. It should be translated that, showing the purpose for or the result of the promised forgiveness. Israel's nationwide repentance will precede the return of Christ to establish his kingdom, as mentioned in Zechariah 13, verse 8, 14, verse 4, in Romans 11, 24, to 26, and Revelation 7, verse 3 to 10. That's a wonderful thing. There's Revelation 7. They all are. Peter's sermon, Peter's sermon teaches that these three things, teaches these three things. One, God's ancient program concerning his kingdom is unchanged. Two, this program awaits the return of Christ. And three, Israel will share in it. And that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father in heaven.